Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here, and in this video we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows Memphis Build 1387 in PCM or 86 box. This is the second video of PCM and 86 box that I have done, and I'd like to continue doing more of these in the future, and the Memphis series has been one of the first one uh, beta operating systems that I've tested on this, uh, either of these emulators of PCM or 86 box. Um, I will be using 86 box in this uh, video tutorial. The PCM um, PCM is very similar on the setup here, so um, but I just have a preference with 86 box. But uh, if you follow along, it's a relatively similar process with each one. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Um, links will be in the description for uh, everything as always. PCM will be in here. You can download the uh, current version for Windows or Linux, and then. 86 box will also be in the description you all of course you're going to need some roms those sorts of things you can make sure to find those um, doing some research and looking through the different sites um, you will also need the windows 95 boot disk that i have linked in the description um, this is a floppy that will need to uh, change the um, or format the drive um, that way we can get the install to work and then there will also be the memphis 1387 iso file in the uh, description there as well once you have all of those here um, you can pick either you know if you're going to use pcm or 86 box whichever you choose there and go ahead and open up whichever one of those um, I'll open up 86 box manager here and we're going to add a new virtual machine and i'm going to check to configure this now and i'm just going to call this windows memphis build 1387 and we're going to add that and it's going to say it's successfully created and then it should prompt us to configure the machine um, and these are the settings i usually do um, you guys can you know mess around with these and maybe investigate with different other uh, you know with different settings if you want um, so of course we're going to disable time synchronization uh, for machine type um, i usually do uh, socket 7 dual voltage and then for the machine i do the um the epox p55a then for processor or cpu type i should say i do intel pentium mmx with 233 speed and then i bump the memory as far as it can go up with 128 megabytes um, again you can investigate with these a little bit choose maybe some better ones that you might think of um, for video um, i would scroll down and then the one that i use is the uh, S3 Trio 64 Phoenix, and I have Voodoo Graphics checked. Um, for input devices, this is just uh, really any of these will work. I think usually I just do standard PS2 mouse. Um, and then for sound, uh, this one we would do uh, Sound Blaster 16. And then network, you can do any one of these, honestly. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the AMD PC net. Use that one works in favor there a lot more. Um, nothing for ports, storage controllers. We need to make sure we set the uh, HD controller to IDE controller. And then for hard disk, this is where you're going to create your hard disk. So if we hit new, I'm going to call this Windows Memphis Build 1387, just like the virtual machine name. And then for size, um, two gigs should be fine for this. Um, so around two gigs, however close you can get it is um, ideal there. And then leave the channel at zero, zero uh, image, RAM disk, and then um, all these really just kind of stay the same there. And then we hit OK. It'll create our hard disk. And it'll say that it is uh, done creating it there. And then for floppy and CD-ROM drives, uh, of course, the second one we can turn off. This first one, I just scroll all the way down and choose 3.5-inch uh, 2.88. And then for CD-ROM, I do the ATAPI. And then uh, you can turn the speed all the way up if you want, and then just make sure the channel is set at 0, 01 uh, down here. And then nothing for other removal devices or peripherals. That should all be OK there. So just hit OK. And you will see that the uh, machine has been created. Um, once that's done, uh, we'll want to hit start. And then for this one, when this boots up, um, the key to get in, we'll get into the BIOS to start off, and I believe it is delete. 
um, using the Epox machine to get into BIOS um, when that opens. So uh, make sure you're clicked inside the machine, hit delete, and it'll open up into the BIOS there. Um, if you want to make this full screen, just go to uh, the view section here and go to resizable window, and it'll let you full screen it here. Um, but what we'll want to do is we'll want to change the uh, BIOS state um in the bios here so we'll go into standard cmos setup and then we're going to change this to uh, this is going to be set to february 6th of 1997 and then the time's of course going to be at zero i mean you can set the time to whatever you want um, but as long as the date is set to february 6th 1997 that is the date uh, that we need for this so um, once that's done you can hit escape to exit out of that um, you don't need to change the boot sequence this is for um if any of you have tried to install like Whistler builds or anything in a PCM or 86 box, that's mainly where you would try and change it to CD-ROM, but we're gonna leave that as is. And so we'll go to save and exit setup and confirm that. And then what we'll want to do, and it might start before we get done here, we we'll wanna go to media, go to floppy and existing image. And then you're gonna wanna locate where your um, Windows 95 boot disk is. Should be called disk1.img. Make sure that's inserted and then going up to CD-ROM and image in the media section up here um, and then locate your Memphis ISO that you have. Um, mine is located there and I got it in just in time it looks like. Um, so it will boot through here and then it should uh, boot us into the Windows 95 boot disk. It'll say Windows starting Windows 95 and then just hit, uh, when you're clicked in here, just hit enter to uh, select option number one for the NEC ID CD-ROM driver. And it will go ahead and load that up here. And then once that is loaded up, it says our uh, drive is drive C um, to access the drive. But what we'll want to do first is we'll want to format the disk, create a partition here. So we'll type F disk. And then we'll want to enable large disk support. And then we'll leave it at one to create a DOS partition and leave it at one again to create a primary DOS partition. And then we'll want to make uh, the partition active. So hit enter again and then escape. And we'll exit the F disk there. And then once that's done, you want to go out of the machine, go to action, um, or actually you can just hit this button up here to reset it. Or you can go to action and uh, hard reset. And then it's going to reset the machine. And then it should boot us back into the uh, boot disk here. So it'll take some time and it'll go ahead and boot into it. And then once it is booted into it, um, of course, so again, we'll want to load the NEC IDE CD-ROM driver, uh, the first option here. And then once it loads that up, um, you should see the drive letter change from C to D um, this time around since there is a drive, the hard drive is now detected as drive C, um, as it should be. Um, so what we'll do is we'll want to format the C drive by typing format C colon, enter. And then when the warning comes up, just hit Y and hit um, enter. You'll go ahead and format the drive. And then uh, you can put a label on it if you want. It's going to end up, I think, overwriting it anyways. So I'm just going to leave it at none. And then that is completed. Now we can access the CD-ROM now by typing in D colon and hitting a uh, directory here. And you can see there is one folder called win9x. And if we do a CD into the win9x folder and do a dir, it'll load up all the files here. You'll see there's 72 files and two directories. Um, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna copy these over to the hard drive. So type in C colon, and then we're gonna make a directory and we're just gonna call it the same thing, win9x. And then we're going to go into the directory by typing cd win9x. And then we're going to type copy d colon uh, backslash win9x. And it will go ahead and copy all the files over into this um, c win9x folder here. So um, this part can take a little bit. The driver.cab files usually take kind of the longest there. Um, there's not too many files here. Again, there's only 72 um, total files that it said when we checked it. So um, it'll copy all these over. And then once that's done, we should be able to begin running the setup here. So um, it says 72 files uh, copied. 
So now we should be, I think we can leave it inserted, but normally at this step, you can go ahead and um, eject the ISO if you want, but we'll just leave it in for now. And then we'll just type setup and hit enter. And then it will load the scan disk and then we'll bring us up into the graphical interface of the setup. So here we are, we're at welcome to Memphis setup. As you've seen uh, in the previous uh, 1351 PCM86 box tutorial, if you did watch that. So we'll hit continue. It'll go through preparing the wizard. And once that is done loading, it will come up with a license agreement. So we'll want to accept that agreement and hit next. We're going to want to install it in the C Windows directory. Hit next. It's going to check for installed components and for available disk space. And then on the uh, setup options here, you can do typical. Sometimes I like to go into custom just to make sure here um, that we have all the sound, uh, the sounds enabled there. So um, when this comes up, you can just type in a name and hit enter. And so usually for this, I like to go in and check all multimedia options um, just to make sure everything's installed. You've got the sound schemes here, sample sounds, everything of that nature. So. Um, that should include everything, and then you can enable other features if you want. So that's kind of why a custom is a little bit of a nice um, method there if you want to add some other things. Um, network configuration, just hit next on this. You can skip that. And then um, for a computer name, I'm just going to call this Memphis1387. You can call it whatever you want. Um, make sure workgroup is set to all caps workgroup. You can have a description if you want. And hit next. Hit next again, and then it's going to try and have us create a startup disk. So if you just hit next, this message will come up to insert a disk. Just go ahead and hit cancel. And then hit OK, and then hit next to start copying files. And so it's going to prepare the copying here, and it will go ahead and copy the files over. And um, for these emulators, it actually uh, goes relatively quick um, for what hardware it's emulating and the fact that it's doing these types of installs. So. Um, again, just let it copy the files over here, and then once it's done, it should prompt us to uh, eventually reboot here. So I'm going to let it do its thing with copying files, and then I'll come back to you guys uh, once we hit our first restart point. All right, so it's done copying files, and it says it's preparing to restart, and then it will come up with a prompt to do the restart here. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK to reboot, and then just hit restart now. And then here we'll actually want to eject the um, floppy disk. Um, should still be okay, I think, to leave the ISO in. It's not like it's going to boot off of that anyways. It'll say getting ready to run Memphis for the first time. You can see the text is different here, too. It used to say getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time, but um, they've replaced that with code name Memphis. Um, still see some resemblances of Windows 95, but for the most part, Memphis is starting to really become a name here. Um, and then on the bottom, you see the description here, or the watermark here of Microsoft Memphis. Uh, 1387 so now it's just going to go through some hardware setup and uh, continue through here on the setup so um, just a matter of kind of letting it do its thing here um, just let it kind of go through its setup and everything and it should be able to get everything uh, going through here um, and then once that is complete it will just keep going through all the uh, uh, setup here so um, yeah once that's all uh, going through here um it'll just continue through so i'm just going to let it keep going through on the setup and then i'll come back to you guys once it's on the uh next uh prompter if it has us reboot so it'll go forth with uh setting up more hardware um when that c continues to load through so that message will come up and then it will come up with the date and time properties here so you can choose your time zone as needed um and then once you have that Selected if you hit date and time, it'll say should be still uh, at February 6th of 1997 and whatever time it is on that and then we'll just want to apply it and hit OK and we'll go through and Do more setting up of the following items there. Uh, you can see on the list So it is running through uh, continuing to run through them and then we can cancel on the printer wizard here. We don't need, we're not setting up a printer or anything. And then we should be good to reboot. And you can tell that it's working since the shutdown sound did play. And it's going to reboot the machine. 
and you'll see Microsoft Memphis developer release the boot screen uh, coming up there and it should prompt us to the logon page. So um, you can go ahead and type in any username here and if you hit okay, it's gonna ask to enter a password. You can create a new one if you want or if you hit okay, it's gonna um, just go without it. So let's see if the startup sound plays here. After it's gonna detect some hardware and then we'll see if it comes up. Okay, so it has booted us up into the desktop here, and we actually did not get any um, startup sound, which is actually kind of interesting. Maybe we... The sound does work, so I think it's just a matter of the files may not be uh, routing properly for that. Uh, if you go to Control Panel and go to Sounds, um, yeah, you see the exit sound does play. Um, if you click Start Windows, yep, it's already... Uh, losing it there um, but you can enable that by going into the uh, list here and it should be called the Microsoft sound and there it is so if you apply that and now to play um, so that's just a tip there if you want to have the startup sound working and then um, as for graphics if we go to settings 256 colors is an option so um, that can be enabled if you hit apply, uh, just hit no on specifying, and it'll go ahead and reboot the machine. And so I'll say Windows is restarting. And as you can see now, we have 256 colors. And the startup sound does play. It looks like the sound was a little bit glitchy there, but um, audio does work and we do have 256 color on this machine too, which is nice. Um, that's why I usually choose that graphics option there at the beginning, since that does typically work with getting to 256 colors automatically without having to install anything additionally there. So with that all being taken care of there, that is the tutorial on how to install Windows Memphis build 1387 in PCM or 86 box. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy the video or found it helpful at all, uh, certainly can leave a like down below. If you have any ideas for any future videos, you can leave a comment down below on the video as well. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel and would like to keep up to date on my content and be notified of any future uploads, you can hit the subscribe button down below and hit the post notification bell to be notified of uploads and keeping up to date on everything. Once again, this is a tutorial, uh, tutorial here on how to install Windows Memphis Build 1387 in PCM or 86 box. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.